Welcome to Osseo for Thursday afternoon football as we wrap up the regular season here with a matchup between the 2-5 and five White Bear Lake Bears and the 2-5 and five Osseo Orioles. Hi, I'm Jay Wilcox along with Bill Hunstock. And Bill, these teams have some similarities besides being both orange <laughs> and black. They are both uh, come in with a couple wins. They've gotten there in a little bit different ways, though. Exactly. As White Bears started out 0-5. Last two weeks they've won, and a couple weeks before that they played some good teams really tough, so they're really kind of trending in the right direction. They really are, and they've had they've had some not only good results the last two weeks, but they're playing better football the last month, and that's really what you want to do with your program is you want to focus on getting better each week to be ready for the playoffs. For Osseo, it's been hit and miss. They've gotten a couple wins. The best one probably the win over St. Michael Albertville, a real competitive game, and and they'd been playing well. Uh, Coach uh, Ryan Stockhouse, though, said maybe took a little bit of a step back last week. He didn't feel like they played very well against Anoka, and they want to kind of wipe that taste out of their mouth and get, get back into playing good football. Yeah, I think they really want to find where they are and find out if they've matured enough as a team to be ready for the playoffs. I think, like you said, Ryan was saying that they really were uh, a little bit disappointed in, in how they fared last week. But the St. Michael Albertville game was a really solid performance for them, and that probably established as good a team as they can be. Let's talk about key players to look at in today's game, starting with the visiting Bears. And uh, Easton Miles has been their leading receiver, but also a guy who might help them some in the run game. You like the versatility of a player like that. Exactly, and the, and the versatility of the offense, I think, is revolving around Miles. It, uh, they move the ball equally well with the run and the pass they want to they want to throw the ball and they want to be able to move the ball consistently on the ground so having that uh, multiple talented athlete is a real positive for us here we're going to talk about a defensive guy a linebacker who uh, doesn't isn't the biggest guy around but charles lewis has, has made some plays for them and made some plays in the other team's backfield and that's a that's a key factor in defense is being able to penetrate being able to get into the line of scrimmage and and disrupt things for the offense and again the type of offense that white bear lake is going to present i think having a versatile linebacker and a mobile linebacker is going to be a real advantage for the orioles different routine obviously here we don't have a whole lot of weekday afternoon games yeah. with this mea week some teams are playing wednesday night of course and then some playing Thursday afternoon. I think it'll be interesting to see just how the players react to that a little bit. Just completely different, you know, see who's ready to go right yeah. away in that first quarter. Exactly. And this is a, this is such a disruptive week in your schedule. You get used to playing on Friday or Saturday, and now all of a sudden you're playing on a Wednesday. Then you're going to get ready for a Tuesday game. And that's really disruptive to your routine. You've got to change things, yet you want to stay as positive as you can and have, every, have everything progressing the way you want it to. And that's really a challenge during MEA week. Bright sunshine, nice temperatures, but it is a little windy. Ooh. Quarterbacks and kickers might have a little bit of an interesting day because of that here. Absolutely. We'll see who comes out on top. White Bear Lake and Osseo, game eight of the regular season up next here on CCX Sports. At Top Line Financial Credit Union, we love getting to be part of our members' big moments. Whether it's making home improvements, going to school, building a business, or even getting married. An interest-only home equity line of credit with payments as low as $50 per month can help you get there. It's just one of the ways we're helping our members on their financial journeys. Become a Top Line member and let us be a part of yours because connected, we all do better. And welcome back here to Osseo as the Bears and Orioles get set to battle here. White Bear Lake won the toss and deferred. And so they will be kicking off to begin the game. Ernie Goodwin will kick off back deep for Osseo. Zamir Johnson, number one, and 29, Mikey Criswell. And then as we talked about in the pregame a little bit, uh, wind for kickoffs is definitely going to have some impact, I would think. So... Uh, you want to be sure-handed back there as well. Goodwin will drive this one, and he gets all of this. Wow, that one's eight yards deep. No chance for a return there. 
And Osseo will get the football first and a quarterback change this week as Isaac Johnson will be getting the start at quarterback for the Orioles. Hasn't played the position too much this year. And they've, uh, Coach Stockhouse was saying, you know, we've had some changes. We've had some things going not our way. But at the same time, they've still generally been able to put up some points and yards. So they... You know, they still feel pretty good about their ability to, to move the football, and Johnson will be the guy taking the snaps here to start things out. Handoff here and a strong play to start the game here for the Bears. Defensively is getting through as Max Del Forge with the stop as Omar Knighton is dropped for about a one-yard loss on the play. And we've got a clock issue. The clock actually seemed to be counting up rather than down there for a moment as uh, it now shows 12.15 remaining, which obviously is not correct. <laughs> that's, that's an interesting way to go. We're going to guesstimate how many seconds that first play would take, but then the clock should have stayed running as well, so they're going to have to factor that in, I think. Osseo coming out of the huddle now being told, hey, we're nowhere near ready for you. Yeah, that's what I figured. They'd run Just about 15 seconds. So it'll be second and 11 for the Orioles here. They run out of the Wildcat this time, and decent gainer there as it's handled by Iggy Cooper. Pushed out of bounds by Mueller. Gain of 10, third down and one. And that'll leave him only a Ooh. yard short. He did get yeah. 10 out of that play, and that was definitely one of the guys from watching film that Ryan Bartlett talked about. we got to beware of zero. He's a good football player, and Iggy Cooper, they said they are going to, you know, we said Johnson starting at quarterback, but Cooper also now is taking the snaps on uh, second and third downs here in the backfield with Knighton. So they're switching things up, and it'll be Cooper again. And he will pick up the first down with these. Keeps on going, and he's brought down out near midfield. Wow. That one didn't look like it was going to be nearly that much, but he'll be stopped at the 46. Yeah, first down and Iggy Cooper looking pretty dynamic those last last two snaps. And the Bears kind of thought they had him bottled up here. Even, you know, it was a good gain initially, but then he runs through a couple of tackles. And so first down Osseo at the 46-yard line is a after that early loss, doing well. Johnson back in there, hands it off. Knighton trying to sweep left. This time the Bears stack him up after a pickup of a couple. Both teams kind of a primary run team, mm -hmm. but can throw a little bit as well, and uh, maybe even more so for White Bear Lake, I would say. But, um, you know, bread and butter, game in, game out, as you look at the starting units there, um, would be as a run team. Yeah, and... and both teams want to be effective throwing the ball, but you can see from this alignment that Osseo is in, this is not a con pass, pass conducive offense. Knighton takes a hard hit there. Was wrapped up down low by Logan Gibson and then got plenty of help, so only about another yard. That first play, they officially called it a one yard gain, and this will be one more here. Bring up a third and eight for the Orioles here. First possession of the game. A noon kickoff on Thursday, again, kind of unusual. We used to see all the MEA games be played Wednesday night, and which a lot of them mm -hmm. were still, but then there are quite a few teams playing today as well. See if Osseo can keep this drive going here on this third and long. Cooper, a little counter action, and gets to the edge. See where he's pushed out. He'll be short of the first down, but he might be definitely in range for that they'll think about going for it. As he reached the White Bear 45, it'll be fourth and one. Yeah, that 
He got a pretty good he got a pretty good stretch right there at the end. So Osseo going to be going forward here on fourth down. Yeah, I think if that play is a you know one or two yard gain, they probably are thinking punt, but uh, definitely not in this spot. And we've got Somebody flags down before the snap could ensue there. That probably going to be a illegal procedure or false start against Osseo. And they'll call it offside actually on <laughs> Osseo. And basically the same, but maybe lined up even. Yeah. So a five yard mark off, see if that changes anything in their thinking here. I believe they'll still go for it, but. Yeah, this is this is somewhat problematic. I I would probably Yeah, they're <laughs> they're going for it and I I would think that from this point in the field you might want to play field position as much as possession. Fourth and six, Johnson back in there now at quarterback. And he will drop to throw down the middle, and it's incomplete. Looking there to try to get that ball to uh, Grant Bozen and, and just a little bit short, so they'll turn it over on downs, White Bear Lake. And Iggy got... No, we got a flag yeah. down on the play here, so... Somewhere, yeah. I spoke too soon. Might have a roughing the passer here, which would be an automatic first down. Personal foul. Yep, you pass. got it. 15 yarder against the Bears. Blow to the head is what they're signaling. Oh. I did not see that. He kind of went with the jump pass to get that one away under yeah. pressure. And we'll see if we can see the hit. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. Not. I don't think he was hit in the head, but no. he was hit with that with the crown head. of the helmet. Yeah. Yeah. Crown of the helmet's going to draw an uns uh, roughing pretty much every time. Really tried to take the head and the helmet out of the game. Low snap here, and Iggy Cooper goes back and picks it up, but he's going to be dropped for a big loss. As yeah, that. Snap got away from them, and this is kind of what coach was talking about before the game. We just we shoot ourselves in the foot too many times here. They get a nice drive going and helped right. by that penalty, and then that snap puts them in second and very long. They are second and 18 or 19 now. But you have two or three downs to, to make it, and Cooper again taking this snap. Looks to bounce it to the outside. Gets a block there and then tripped up. Getting him down low there was... Uh, not sure on that uh, stop there for the Bears, but they'll get a, leave him with a third and of 13. So he got five, which ordinarily is a pretty good gainer but when it's that long to go they were hoping for a little bit more in that sweep exactly. it's been kind of interesting cooper every time he's back there taking the snaps it's pretty much just him looking to run and yep the bears i'm sure they're gonna will be figuring <laughs> that out <laughs> yep johnson back in now gonna hand it off up the middle to Knighton and pretty well defended and they'll get a couple, but leave them with fourth and about 10. Yeah, depending on the spot, they're going to be right at 9 or 10 yards. Yep. So now it's fourth down. I'm not sure there's a lot of good fourth and 10 plays, Jay. This is. But on this part of the field, when you're at the 35-yard line, you almost feel compelled to. Yeah, I'm not surprised at all to see them going for it here. They threw over the middle last time, and then it ultimately led to a roughing the passer penalty. Johnson rolling right under some pressure, spins away, still being chased. Johnson keeping it alive, and then is brought down as he just couldn't quite elude the rush there. John Johnson got a hold of his arm and 
Dragged him down for no gain, and that will turn it over on downs. And this time I've kept my eyes up. There is no flag on this one, <laughs> so they will not be keeping the drive alive with the penalty. And White Bear Lake will take over on downs at the 36-yard line. Led by their quarterback, Tony Anamashan. Look, good scramble by Johnson. He kept the ball alive, but then just reaching out and getting enough of him there was Johnson to bring him down. Anamashan handing it off up the middle, and Osio is all over that one. I don't think they quite made it back to the line of scrimmage there on the uh, carry for the Bears was uh, Porter Cleary. No gain on the play. So you look at the starters. White Bear had a good sophomore running back who's injured out for the year now. The unfortunate uh, for them, Brian White. They've had some injuries at running back, Coach uh, Bartlett was saying, but other than that, they've been, you know, relatively healthy. So second down and 10. Anamashan looking to run this one himself. It's quarterback sleep, sweep left, and he has popped. Nice tackle coming up to meet him there for the Orioles was uh, Zachiel, uh, Peter Zachiel. Zachiel did a nice job of squeezing that edge down and be, being able to make a, a good open field tackle. Great form tackle there too. Both arms wrapped up, hit yep. him hard in the thigh. Not gonna get a penalty that way. So third and about eight now for White Bear Lake. Coach Bartlett saying we on a good day we usually throw the ball about 20 times. So here's the pass over the Ooh. middle. It's deflected and it will fall incomplete. Those are the kind you worry about getting picked. And now it looks like probably a punting situation here for White Bear Lake. Field position dictating that you're probably not going to go for it here. They do bring on the uh, punter, Goodwin, who is the kicker and the punter for the Bears. Yeah, punting, punting might be interesting today with the wind coming across the field. And sometimes at a pretty good clip. Zamir Johnson back along with uh, DeAndre Smith. High fluttering punt. Smith will take it on the 30 and brought down from behind there as he was captured by Charlie Racine. But a good job fielding the ball. I mean, first and foremost, that wasn't that easy. <laughs> that ball was no. really fluttering in the wind, and he did a good job staying with it and just getting upfield and giving Osseo some decent field position for their second possession at their 37. So look at Ryan Stockhouse and... He said, yeah, it's been an up and down year. We've, we, when we're playing well, we feel like we've competed well with most of the teams on our schedule. Right. But, um, you know, just had too many things kind of get away from them on a few nights. Ooh, almost had an offside there. Knighton on the carry here keeps the legs driving as they tried to rip the ball away. Because Marchek was the trying to make the tackle and the strip there all at the same time. And Knighton will pick up five on the play. Knighton kind of a uh, good fullback look for this offense. Five seven only, but a boy yeah. he's about 185. Strong kid. Second and five now. Johnson is in there at the quarterback slot. Goes back Ooh. to Knighton, and that one is going nowhere. Well, that was stuffed by about three or four guys. Yeah, first and foremost, Gerald Wright. And they will stack him up for maybe a short loss on the play. Bring up a third down here. We've got five minutes to go in the opening quarter. No score on the board. White Bear Lake in white, Osseo in black. Both teams long-term orange and black teams. White Bear won by a touchdown over at White Bear Lake when these teams played last year. And Ooh. the handoff here will result in a nice gainer for the Orioles as Jonathan Wills on the carry and into White Bear territory. First time they gave him that look and it worked out well. 
And they really ran that, really executed that play pretty nicely. Getting the ball in, not only into the line of scrimmage, but a nice read of the, of the seam, getting behind the block, and accelerating upfield, getting the ball in good field position at the 40 or just inside the 40. 19 yard pickup to the Bears, 39. And here's Ziggy taking that snap, and he will be close to a first down here. It looks like they'll spot him at the 30, so a nine yard gain. Iggy Cooper. They've kept the Bears off balance a little bit with, yep. you know, they're switching, having Johnson back there, and then Cooper. It's kind of more or less a wildcat look, I guess yeah. you'd call it, as he's yep. pretty much just taking off and picking the spot behind the blockers. Johnson is back in there now. Knighton takes the handoff, trying to bounce this one outside. Ooh. And boy, it looked like he was going to easily get the first down, and instead he gave up ground and will lose yardage on the play. Yeah, they, he got a favorable spot. He's going to be right about the line of scrimmage for forward progress, but yeah, they, they pushed him back pretty good. See, right there, well, yep. I can see why he d took that path, but then trying to bounce it outside, it just didn't work. Yep. It, it, bouncing it outside, and unless you can really outrun people or there's something happened to the flank support, you're really gonna struggle with that because you just don't have an angle. Cooper. We'll get the first down. They keep that pile moving here. <clears throat> Stacked up about the 25. We do have an Osseo player still in a sitting position there, Wills. Yeah, I didn't see what, what transpired for Jonathan Wills to be, because he was away from the play there. Working on his foot or ankle, it looks like. Mm -hmm. Osio trying to continue this uh, solid drive here, their second time with the football. And they've moved the ball fairly well here. They've moved the, you know, from their own 36 down to right around the 25 of White Bear Lake. Yeah, good offensive line play here. They've, you know, a lot of these plays seem relatively basic. It just, you know, Iggy Cooper taking that snap and looking for an opening and. Yeah, if they, if they can get, if he can hit a seam and get one step, he's gonna he's gonna do pretty well. They get they have to really work to stop Iggy at the line of scrimmage or even in the backfield. You gotta get some penetration. Hand off here and a good stiff arm there by Griswell, but he is yeah. brought down after about a one yard gain. Uh, Interesting, too. Oh, yeah, another injury another for the Orioles here, and it looks like the ball carrier, Criswell, who yeah. never got up. He, he started to get up and then just eased his way down, lying on his right side. Not what they needed here. Another injury. Oh, somebody landed on... One of the defensive linemen landed on his legs. We see. Right and he, he got slammed to the ground pretty hard yep. initially, too. Yep. I don't know. It might have been related to that. It was one of those plays where the, he got his arms wrapped up, so he couldn't really break his fall there. He was right. kind of body slammed to the ground. Not illegally, but just. Good hard, yeah. good hard plant. Osio is asking about playoff possibilities, and 
Coach uh, Stocko said, we might be able to move up one spot if we could get a win today. Uh, otherwise, we should be locked in at the seventh seed for out of their section. He said Coon Rapids will be definitely behind them in eighth. Right. But and that's going to be that's going to be a tough section to compete in, I'm sure. Well, all the six A sections are well, and the way they do it too, you don't really play within your section. Right. The, the seating is yeah. done, but not. This, yep. But still, uh, you know, might get a little bit better matchup in that first round if you were able to get to three and five today. Yeah, it looks like more like shoulder is what yeah. he's holding now, Chris. Well, again, like I mentioned, got wrapped up without really the ability to break his fall there, and that I think his shoulder might have got driven into the ground there, in the force of that tackle. He seems to be. Favoring that left shoulder, so I think you're right, Jay. He took a pretty good hit on the ground with that. So out of the injury timeout, it'll be second and nine for Osio. The 25 of White Bear Lake here. No score on the board, late first quarter. Cooper looking to run sweep left. And he will get to that edge. Down the sideline, let's see where they'll mark him out of bounds. Down near the five, it looks like. And, oh, well, we've got a flag, though, behind the play here. Let's see if this one will stand. Way back yep. in the backfield. Looks like it's going to be against Osseo, the body language tells me. Probably a hold. Yeah, going to be holding. Oh, wipe out a good, what was going to be a very good gainer and set them up in great position. Yeah, nice 20-yard run. And you get a 10-yard walk off and... Back to the 35. You can pick that out sure. where this would have happened here. Some great blocks initially, and yeah, I don't know. It's hard to see anything in particular there, but not yeah. that doesn't mean there wasn't one. <laughs> yeah, defensive lineman 41 threw up his hands like, oh, I'm being held. I'm not, not convinced, but what am I call? Uh -huh. And the throw deep downfield here, and it's oh, complete geez. to Iggy Cooper. In there at quarterback was Barsonis, the junior lefty. And he finds Iggy Cooper, who's been mainly taking snaps and running it, and instead this time it'll be a touchdown toss of 35 yards. Well, nice throw and ni a really nice catch by Cooper as he reached up over the defender to grab the ball and turn it into the end zone. Osio giving them a little bit of different looks on various plays here and that time we had our, our really our third quarterback if you will to take a snap today. Yep. Arsenis and he was being pressured too he just barely got that one away but he put it pretty well on target and as Bill said a good catch as well. Timeout yeah. taken here by Osio. Timeout taken by so the Orioles will strike first here and now looking to add the extra point. Huh? On, I told you. <laughs> well, that's a really good look at, uh, at Iggy. Iggy Cooper sitting on the bench getting a drink. Here we'll see. That nice catch. You're pretty well defended by the, by the White Bear secondary, but... It, Iggy Cooper was able to get up and get his hands on the ball ahead of the the White Bear Lake defender and gets it into the end zone. Nice play. That was a nice pass, too. Yeah, and it, you just barely got it off before the rush arrived, too. John Fala on to attempt the extra point here for Osio. And his kick is up and good. Fala, a great soccer player for the Orioles, and he bangs that one through. So with a minute 32 to go in the first quarter, Osio has definitely dominated the time of possession here, Absolutely. striking first in a maybe a little unexpected way as they throw to Iggy Cooper, and it was Barsenas completing it. So a 7-0 Orioles lead and White Bear Lake who haven't had the ball much. 
There's uh, Ryan Bartlett, the Bears head coach. I was looking at it, wow, 13 years already. We knew him, of right. course, when he coached over at Armstrong and uh, really enjoyed working with him there. Just a really good, solid guy and and uh, got the opportunity to take that White Bear Lake job. And, Kicking you know, the, both of these teams, in, in, I think, are, have some similarities, too, in their exactly. programs that, where you're some of the teams you're playing, I mean, you're playing some really good teams, and sometimes <laughs> it's hard to look good when you're facing, you know, on this side, Metro North, if you're facing the Maple Groves and, you know, the lately yeah. years, Anoka. And, um, Anoka, Edina, Minnetonka, <laughs> you know, and even Shakopee. Yeah, they're in the Metro South. Right. And White Bear Lake's got to deal with... They've got a, they've got some some people to deal with as well with Stillwater, Moundsview. Follow will kick off here and take it on about the five yard line. And Miles out to the 30, almost broke free of that next wave as well. But he will be stopped there. So Bears, I'm sure they kind of feel like we haven't really gotten much of a chance yet offensively. Osseo's <laughs> had the ball most of the time. Yeah, they've only had, what, three plays or yeah, four plays? Yeah, they went three and out. They had a couple of runs and then an incompletion, and that was it. And Easton Miles does a good job of getting them back into good field position to start this possession. But like you said, Jay, the majority of the uh, period was uh, – was the uh, Oriole offense. Well, that's the thing. These 12 minute quarters in, in high school, and if you're a, you know, a team that's primarily running and often running between the tackles, you can end up you know, keeping the ball a long time. Yep. Oof. And that one will go nowhere. Great stop by Philip Sea as they hand it off to Cleary. And Osseo Kind of dominating the line of scrimmage with their defense. It, it, you know, obviously it's a small sample size, but these first handful of plays have not gone well for the Bears. So yeah, Philip Say has moved up to a linebacker spot from his secondary position. Anamashan will run this one. Hit first there by Jalen. Nathong Basath for the Orioles, and that time a pretty decent pickup. He'll get about six, maybe even mm -hmm. seven. So I'll leave him with third and three here. Down. This could be the last play of the first quarter. Ooh, and they nice. will get the first down. Best, uh, probably best hole open there for the Bears O-line. They get their first first down. That was a nice that was a nice hole, a nice run by the running back to get in there and get that six yards. We'll probably see a fair amount of pulling and trapping by the White Bear Lake offensive line today. They tried to get that snap off, but didn't quite do it. So that's going to do it for the first quarter as Osseo taking the lead courtesy of this play. 7-0 Osseo after one here. We'll be back with our second quarter of football on CCX. In 1935, Top Line Financial Credit Union was founded by workers from our local phone company, by people who dedicated their lives to keeping our community connected. At Top Line Financial, that dedication lives on because we believe that dreams are achieved when we connect with each other. So if you're dreaming of buying a new home or car, or planning for your future, or saving for that next vacation, connect with us. We'll help you get there. Because connected, we all do better. Welcome back. Osseo leading 7 to nothing as they relive that touchdown play there, it looks like. And 
White Bear Lake getting their first first down there that last play. And uh, now as we change ends, they'll have it at their own 44, first and 10. Amishan giving it to Cleary. And kept moving. It's going to be interesting where they spot this one because he kind of broke free and mm -hmm. then tried to get going again. And um, I think he'll end up only getting a yard on that play. And it's only fair. You can't really call forward progress if he <laughs> attempts to get out of it himself and runs backward a little bit. Right. So second down and nine coming for the Bears. Miles in there in the backfield again. Oh, he took an early yeah. hit, and he cannot get away. Good arm strength there on the stop for Osseo by Dominic Jones. Jones with a stop for Osseo. The inside linebackers for, for Osseo have been relatively active here. We can see Jones making initial hit there right at the line of scrimmage and not giving Miles any place to go. Tried to spin out of it, but good strength to hang on to him there. So we got third down and nine. Bears have thrown one pass. Might see another one here. Yeah, with an empty backfield. Yeah, four receivers set here. Or five, excuse me. Anamashan will look to throw right. He's got the completion, and it'll be enough for the first down. It's a good pitch and catch there out to uh, Tegan Bartok. And we have a on the two receiver side. There's a double out, and the first receiver was covered. The wide guy was not. So Bartok's able to make the catch and get the four or five yards after the catch to get the first down. Handoff here going to Miles. I'm sorry, yeah, Miles on the carry, and he will be stopped at the 40. He gets about four as he kind of stumbled forward there. They're starting to, you can see their, their line starting to get a little bit more of a rhythm going now. Yep, getting a little bit of a push here. They moved number 15, Charlie Racine, into a what we might call an H-back alignment there, right almost behind the tackle, sometimes right behind the guard. Anamashan will run this one, and he squirts through a hole, and he's still going down that sideline. Finally wrapped up, I say. And let's see where they'll spot him. This will be a gain of about tackle 20. Fly, yeah, they're going to yep. spot it at the 20-yard line, so he picks up 20 and another first down. The planned run all the way here, of course. Yeah. We can see he does a good job, but uh, he got a really good block from his H-back, Charlie Racine, who's listed as an offensive lineman. So we can see here in this formation, he's right between the tackle and the guard. Cleary takes the handoff here and cut down. Witcher came up and <coughs> shot the gap down low, but still another nice pickup as he'll get about six on that play. Yeah, they're getting a really good lead from Racine from that alignment that they're using, and, and he's getting a good angle on the inside backers who are pretty active, and he's been able to get a block on them. Cleary takes the handoff, and he's got room to run up the middle. And let's see, did he reach it over the touchdown. end zone? Yes, touchdown. Cleary will get in from 16. And the Bears within an extra point of trying to tie this one up. Showing what their offense can do after that uh, three and out. And again, you know, barely possessing the ball in that. Right first quarter and they come out with a very nice looking drive here. Yeah, Peter Cleary gets a, a really good look at the seam and gets up field in very good order. Goodwin on to attempt the extra point here. And he will drive it through. So 9.13 to go in the second quarter and we are now tied up at seven apiece as White Bear Lake a solid drive there. 
able to put it together. They got one pass completion <laughs> that was a key, but otherwise all on the ground and a mixture of guys running it too, Cleary and Miles and uh, and also the quarterback, Anamashan. Uh, really a, a, a line, a O line kind of drive too. I think. Look at the hole they open right. up there. And that's that's really what they they were counting on. Coach Bartlett said that they think that they can open some inside holes, and you can see that they really that was a that was a gaping hole we see from the end zone view. Yeah, and he reached out. It was hard to tell. I thought for a moment, you know, did his hip <laughs> hit down before he put the ball over? But uh, they say, no, he got there. So Goodwin will kick off here. Ossie will get the football back now, having seen the game tied up. And this one's going to go into the end zone. So the, wi the wind, from what we could feel coming, you know, before the game, was kind of really coming across the field from the other uh, side of the field right across, so not necessarily favoring one team or the other yeah. directionally. But it doesn't seem to have had a whole lot of impact as you can look at the flag, you know, on those kicks at least. I yeah. mean, extra points, obviously, they're not super long, but... So we'll see what Hasio has in mind to try and get this drive going here. We do have Barsonis in there at quarterback. He threw the touchdown pass. And yeah. flag down. Encroachment, probably. Yes, indeed. Bears will be penalized for the second time. Those kinds of penalties drive you nuts. <laughs> yeah. All of a sudden you give somebody a first and five right after you've scored. And off to Knight and just barely got that one. There was the timing wasn't looking the greatest on that one, but able to get that handoff away to Knight and only got about a yard, it looks like. Yeah, really not a... Second and four. Not much there. Good penetration. They, one of the things that Coach Bartlett said is that they, the down three linemen that they have are going to be trying to take angles and alignments different each play, try to keep the uh, Osseo offense guessing. Heck, they go to Knight in here, and the Bears string it out pretty well. Now we have a flag down. Well, it seemed to come out right about the time they were tackling him. I wonder right. if they got a face mask. That's what I, yeah, I think you're right. That's what I was thinking, Jay, is that from that spot on the field, that would. Officials discussing it here, and I think that is what it's going to be. Personal foul. Yeah, face it mask. is a face mask Penalty against the Bears' right defense. The Good call, face Jay. Mask. We we'll get you a striped shirt. <laughs> no thanks. <laughs> so that'll move it out to the 37 yard line, a first down, a couple of big defensive penalties so far. As you see, they did a great job stringing Knight and out here. Oh, yeah. And then right there. Right there. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yep. Yeah, pretty easy to spot. Here's Knighton taking the handoff again, and he'll be wrapped up and brought down at the 39, a couple of yard gain. Yeah, that time the safety rolled up to the up to the last carriage and put eight men in the box. And that's tough to run against that. It's hard to block eight with six. We've got Cooper out in a slot here. He has the touchdown on a reception from Barsonis. And flag down before the snap. That's either going to be an illegal procedure. That's what it is. Also giving five back here. Five 
five yard penalty. Remains second down. Not really sure if there was any injury to Johnson or just kind of a, you know, change up, give them a different look kind of thing. Here. Right. Carson is dropping to throw up into the wind and oh. just knocked away at the last second as he tried to connect there with uh, Johnson, who was out there as a receiver that time, which is his listed position. A one on one opportunity, and they that battled it out a yeah. little bit. Catchable pass, too. Ty Mueller there defensively. And Johnson is a receiver now on this near side, so maybe this is what we'll be seeing going forward for the most of the game here, and you never know. And Barsonis drops the snap, and he's just going to have to fall on it. And that'll bring up a punting situation. Well, that, that penalty knocked him back, and then they just couldn't couldn't recover. Brings up fourth down. Yeah, that's the thing. In particular, when you're primarily a running team, making up penalties or you know losses on plays can be tough. Right. You notice on the uh, trainer's bench, our running back with the injured shoulder. We are on to punt, Lance Quia driving this Ooh. one. And whoo, it's a good kick. Look at this bounce he's gonna get. Can they get to it? It's gonna go yeah. out of bounds <laughs> at the two yard line. Wow. What a 70 wow. yard punt. Now if there's ever a <laughs> highlight for a punter, that would be it. Absolutely, oh. that, was, that was excellent. Surprise the Bears with the distance he got on it, but then you couldn't ask for a better roll. It went about another 25 yards and then kind of veered right and went out of bounds at the two or three yard line. They'll spot it actually. So, hmm, incredibly good in, punt there for the Orioles. In good field position for the Orioles defense. This is the uh, spot on the field that. Bobby Bowden from Florida State always liked to say, I'm going to put some pressure on you. And, and he would almost always want to throw a long pass on first and 10 from inside his own five yard line. They're going to go to Cleary on the handoff up the middle. Not much doing. Maybe a yard on the play. Lewis on the stop there for Osio. Yeah, very, no, no gain, actually. Yeah, very well defended by the inside four guys of the of the Osseo defense to get a little bit of penetration and stymie the blocks and then being able to make a tackle right there at the line of scrimmage. Anamashan looking to run it on the sweep. And he gets to that edge. And we'll have a nice gainer out to about 18 or so here. So I'll give him a first down. For a White Bear Lake first down. And that's a that's a a really well executed play for White Bear Lake, and that's a tough one to stop because you 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 want to make sure they can't run the ball inside, but you really got to take the flank away, and that's that was very hard to do. They got a good block on the flank, and run was one was made there. Looking to throw this time. Down the <sighs> middle and just overshooting his intended target there, looking for Sane. <laughs> I think they were really hoping for the element of surprise there after running the ball most yeah. of the time and trying to spring one. It was pretty, pretty well defended overall. That's a, especially yeah. on a windy day like this. That's a hard one to, to thread uh, in there. That's a, that's a, especially that long a pass too. So second down and 10 now for the Bears. 
Back to the ground, Miles taking the handoff here, spins and then runs into trouble as he met up with Walquist. And only about a yard gain or so on that one, it looks like. Third down and nine coming for White Bear here as we tick down toward five minutes to go in this first half. 7-7 our score, White Bear Lake scoring early in the second quarter after Osio had put one on the board late in the first. Sean looking to throw. And just too high there. He had Ben Lockwood open. That one would have been a nice gainer and probably gotten him the first down, but he overshot Lockwood. Yeah, that was that was a nice, nicely executed pass play. Just got it a little too high. As we can see right here, Lockwood just could not get up and get to it. But I think you're right, Jay. I think if, if, if that's completed, he would have had the first down. And that's when we're, you know, the coaches watching up top probably said, gosh, we had the right play call. We mm. just didn't get it executed <laughs> there. Goodwin on to punt. Asia should get good field position here, you'd think. Gets this one away. Oof. And catching it and then falling, but that's okay. They'll take that as uh, DeAndre Smith. Only be about a two-yard return, but they still are going to be in White Bear territory. Yeah, they're going to be at the 47-yard line. So that's that's pretty good field position. And the right amount of time here for Osseo that they uh, you know don't have to worry about time, but they also might be able to use up most of the rest of the quarter. That would be an ideal drive for them as if they Exit. went down and score and don't give White Bear any more time left either. Iggy Cooper taking the snap here, and he will run it. And wrapped up. Solid tackle there by Logan Gibson. Got two on that one. By the way, Wills is back in the game for us. You went out uh, shaking up earlier. And we've not seen Criswell back, though, I don't think. No, I don't, and I don't think we'll see him back. He was getting his shoulder taped up. Here is Wills taking this hand off and unable to squeeze through there, and there'll be no gain on this play. Bears taking the ball away late. They're saying it's a fumble. I think they're ruling him down already, though. Our forward progress stopped anyway. Now that's what it looks like. But no gain on the play, so now third and long. As we see an inside trap here, but just no room to run. Pretty well defended by the yeah, White Bear Lake defense. First time they used that, I think they caught them off guard a little bit after they'd been running mostly sweeps, but right. that time they were definitely ready. And here's Iggy Cooper sweeping to the left, and he'll get a good gain still on his feet, bounces away from the next wave, and down... Inside the 25-yard line, a nice pick up there. That's a 20-yard run. Yeah, I give him 21. It looks like you see the he does a good job of setting up. Up, he doesn't just sprint out of the out of the uh, snap. He waits until the blockers can block and then accelerates. Right here, as you can see, and then he gets past a couple of people, breaks a tackle. And all of a sudden, he's gone up the field. He will run it again, this time sweeping the other direction. And a mighty stiff arm at the end. As he tosses a tackler aside there and actually getting a little bit of an injury, too, as Mueller looked like. He was the one who got the stiff arm, but then his, his leg is buckled. Yeah. And i got to be honest with you there, Cooper's lucky he didn't get a flag for taunting after that play. He kind of stood <laughs> over him and... Yeah, and you can't do that. That's that's not a not a good thing. We'll see right at the end of the play here as Cooper gets to Mueller. I don't see quite where Mueller's leg got twisted up or turned up, but he he got up and started to walk off, and then went back down. 
You see, see him. watch him shove him yeah. down there. And he lands on him, too, lands on his leg. So Osseo at the 14 of White Bear Lake. Boy, too, what, you know, he plays that you probably first ran as an 8-year-old, uh, about as basic as you get. A quarterback right. sweep is basically what their two big gainers have been on this drive. Yeah. But fast, you get fast out there guy right and fast guy left. Yeah, and you and you get out there and uh, have enough bodies to get good initial blocks, and uh, all of a sudden he's got room to run. Well, White Bear Lake has done a pretty good job from tackle to tackle, and so when you can when you can threaten the inside and keep keep five or six guys stationary inside, that opens up the flanks which we've seen the last two or three plays with uh, with Iggy Cooper carrying the ball for Osseo. He will stay in there taking these snaps. And we'll run it again. Cooper this time runs into uh, Gibson and Del Forge. Give him about three, it looks like maybe two yards two on this play. Yards. Yeah, and, and this one is right inside the tackle, a little bit tighter than where he'd been running the last two or three plays. That's the thing. These can kind of have a cumulative effect a little bit on the defense, too. You're getting knocked around. It's a physical game, and... Time out here, Osio. Minute and 54 remaining in the half. Be a second down and eight coming up for the Orioles as they try and take the lead back here. They're tied up at seven right now, but a nice drive going and in position to add points here late in this first half. Both teams looking for their third win of the year. They're each at two and five in the uh, first seven contests. Play some wild games uh, on uh, Wednesday night, Bill. You and John Jacobson <laughs> had a uh, Park Center win. That kind of was a uh, one for the ages there, a late comeback over Sartell. And then uh, Armstrong finishing the regular season undefeated with a 57-56 <laughs> double overtime win at Andover. Yeah, those overtime games are crazy because anything can happen in an overtime. And we saw last night where Sartell's possession, they, they were able to run six plays from 10 yards and still didn't score. Cooper stepping left here and is cut down. That time the Bears did a pretty good job. They went with that counter look, you know, taking that one step right and then coming back left. And he had a, he had a good phalanx of, of blockers, but Really good fill by the secondary from White Bear Lake to get in and, and make that play for a minimal gain. Yeah, they'll call it no gain, in fact. So third and long coming up. Osseo was working pretty extensively on field goals. So if they don't get anything here, eh, we'll see. Wouldn't be out of the question. Iggy Cooper will run it right, cuts it up. Flag is down on the play. He's knocked down at about the six, and I think this one will maybe against Osseo anyway. I think we're gonna, right there at the line of scrimmage, we're gonna get a holding call against one of the lead blockers. So it is indeed a hold. White Bear had stopped him short of the first down, but obviously in this spot you take the, the yardage, make it third down again. And make the, make the possible field goal problematic as well. Right. 
and Asio had gained enough that it was going to be fourth and fairly short, so I don't think there was really any decision to be made there for Wake Bear. They take that penalty. Cooper going to hand it off to Knight and trying to sweep around that left mm. edge. And he's going to be Knight knocked out of here. bounds. Well short. Well, actually way back by the yep. back stick there. So they'll leave them with fourth and about ten. They got about an eight or nine yard gain, but still well short of the uh, first down line to gain. And it is going to be a field goal try, looks like. Fala is out there. This would be about a 31-yarder. Got the leg to do it for sure, but again, a bit of a wind issue to be dealing with today. See if he can knock it through here. Good snap and hold. Fowler's kick is up, and it is good. 31-yard field goal for Fowler. We said, you know, ideally they'd get points late here. They were thinking seven, but they'll take three as they take the lead back now at 10-7. And as you said, Jay, late in the, in the half, 40 seconds to go in the half. White Bear will get the ball first in the third quarter. Be interesting to see how White Bear Lake's offense comes out. Are they going to try to push the field and get a score? Or are they going to play for the halftime and get the ball to start the third quarter? As we see the kick go right, right through the uprights. Yeah, he had plenty of leg on that one. It was interesting when we <laughs> came down to talk to Coach Stockhaus. He had been, you know, walk, watching and working with. Uh, Fala at that end of the field as he was he said he was trying to figure out the wind because it was at times <laughs> gusting sometimes it was slowing down and there wasn't much wind and and uh, it's a kind of an important thing that you don't really think about for kickers to kind of have to really work that pregame and see what exactly the wind's doing you know it, it just changes maybe where you aim slightly and just just make yeah and making minor adjustments and hoping that you can do that during the game I never figured out how kickers could do that anyway, but that's the conundrum that kickers are, I think. <laughs> Fala will kick off. And he'll drive it deep into the end zone, so no chance for a return here for the Bears. 40 that's seconds that's to go in this opening half. White Bears had one good drive mixed in with two not so good, and that's really all they've had the opportunity for. So this late, this field position, I'd be surprised if you see anything terribly aggressive from them here, but we'll see. Yeah, I, I don't think they'll be trying to, and maybe they will, trying to throw the ball deep and make something happen. I think it, it depends on how much confidence you have in your guys to do it. And Anamashan tucks it and then is sacked. Tried to squeeze his way out of there but couldn't quite do so as uh, Eidsvog gets the sack. Good pressure from the outside. And they're just going to... White Bear Lake's just going to let the clock run out now. So they will head off the field here as we reach halftime. That late field goal in the second quarter will give Osseo a halftime lead. Our score at halftime here at John Hansen Stadium at Carlton Field. Osseo 10, White Bear Lake 7. We'll have first half highlights and stats and our second half of football coming up here. Thanks for watching High School Football on CCX. At Topline Financial Credit Union, we love getting to be part of our members' big moments. Whether it's making home improvements, going to school, building a business, or even getting married. An interest-only home equity line of credit with payments as low as $50 per month can help you get there. 
It's just one of the ways we're helping our members on their financial journeys. Become a Top Line member and let us be a part of yours. Because connected, we all do better. And welcome back here to Osseo as we are at halftime of this afternoon's contest. Yes, a Thursday afternoon football battle here to end the regular season. Osseo 10, White Bear Lake 7 is our halftime score as we check out some highlights from, a, I thought, a very interesting first <laughs> half. We had a bit of variety of things, a good hard physical stop there by Racine for White Bear Lake. But then there's the touchdown pass. Iggy Cooper had been mainly running the ball as a Wildcat quarterback. There is the receiver. And Barsonis finds him for the score. And then Cleary answering early in the second quarter. White Bear Lake had one good drive, and that's how it finished right there. And then Cooper, a couple of good runs, really just sweeps, one left and one right. Here was the one to the right that helped set up what ultimately led to a field goal for Fala, an impressive one with the wind here, 31-yarder to end the first half. That one came with 40 seconds to play and gives Osseo this uh, 10 to 7 halftime lead. You see the stats overall, not a lot of completions. I think actually just one completion for each team. <laughs> one of them, of course, they'll be in that 35 yard touchdown for Osseo. Orioles have run the ball relatively well, especially Cooper on those sweeps has been their main weapon. Yep. And you see both teams definitely have had a few key penalties that have had some impact on the game as well. White Bear taking a couple of 15 yarders that definitely did not help their cause. Still anybody's game as we head into half number two. Both teams, as I said, looking for their third win of the regular season, both two and five coming in. And it looked pretty even on paper, and that's definitely the way it's shaping up so far. Second half of football coming up next here on CCX. At Top Line Financial Credit Union, we love getting to be part of our members' big moments. Whether it's making home improvements, going to school, building a business, or even getting married. An interest-only home equity line of credit with payments as low as $50 per month can help you get there. It's just one of the ways we're helping our members on their financial journeys. Become a Top Line member and let us be a part of yours. Because connected, we all do better. We are just about set for half number two on a sunny but windy afternoon here at Osseo. Glad you could join us for this one here. And, uh, uh, you know, when they vary the schedule up, kind of helps. We got, uh, got to see Park Center on Wednesday night, Bill mm -hmm. and John Jacobson, with a fantastic finish and a win in overtime for them. And then we get the chance to get our, another team on uh, the Orioles here this afternoon. And, I have some playoff football ahead to be determined, of course, matchups oh, yeah. and everything for you. But uh, continuing this playoff season, but another good football season here. We got uh, uh, three teams' possibility of finishing the regular season unbeaten from our area. Armstrong already did. Maple Grove's playing right, right now, and Tatino Grace as well. Uh, so certainly a good year again in the area. Yeah, there's a look at the. Uh, trees. Bill, we were watching at halftime. If it should come up in the game though, uh, we saw a great field goal by Fala <laughs> to end the half for Osseo. Well, I'll tell you what, his counterpart, Goodwin from White Bear Lake, hit 55-yard <laughs> field goal going in that same direction at halftime. Now, granted, it's not quite the same no, but when it's not a rush and you don't have to have the snap and the hold and all that, but holy cow, I couldn't believe it. He was drilling him through. I don't know if the wind, it didn't seem to be in a direction that it would be a no. big help either it, it, wind is pretty well coming across the field so to get a get a 60 yarder with with no help it's pretty darn good Fala, this one will bounce and taken by miles at about the nine yard line here gets upfield in a hurry and oh. wrapped up at the 35 miles with the he's dragged down there by Heights food. We get a good look at Miles' speed and ability to run the ball there. He he got that ball right up the middle of the field and yeah, he just just his first <coughs> three steps. He looks athletic when, mm -hmm. he, when he gets a, gets a, picks up that ball and gets going. Absolutely. And let's see if uh, White Bear Lake is 
what they've uh, done at halftime here to get their offense on track a little bit. Oh. Anamashan will run this one directly and then he bounces back and it will only be about a two, maybe three yard gain. Looked like there was gonna be more, but maybe got a little greedy by trying to bounce that one instead of just finishing the run. So he'll get two. And that's a first time we've seen that that wildcat type run right off the guard. Second down and eight. Handoff this time going to Nate Tveit. And he will pick up a three. Third and five. Third and five for the Bears here. Overall, I think Osio has to be relatively happy with that first half defensively. I mean, they yep. did give up the one nice drive, but other than that, they were solid. Anamashan will run this one again and will pick up that first down. It's been interesting. Both of these teams, kind of their their best plays have really been just the <laughs> most basic looking things with Absolutely. the sweep. And it's do you block it well or do you not? And they did. They got a good surge at the yeah, point of attack. And uh, Anamashan was able to get uh, get five, six yards for the first down there. First down at the 46 now for White Bear Lake on their opening possession here of the second half. Cleary takes the handoff. Tripped up there down low by Dominic Jones. Give him a couple on that carry. Cleary kind of a thick-legged running back, it looks like, a 5'7", <laughs> yeah. 180. Scored their only touchdown. Anamashan looking to throw. Here comes a rush, and he is going to be sacked. Lewis. Breaking through was Charles Lewis and wrapped him up. Never really did get him all the way down, but had him stopped and in the hold of the defensive player, so they blew the whistle there. Oh, my goodness. Nice favorable spot for White Bear Lake. <laughs> Yeah, he ended up running backward with him, so I suppose mm -hmm. you don't you really don't give that yardage. <laughs> so third and sixteen now from the forty one. Anamashan looking to throw, now rolling out right, throws oh, downfield. Oh, oh. He's got a man out there and the catch is made and down to the fifteen yard line. Great pickup for the Bears as he hooks up with Lockwood. Well, obviously, by far and away, their biggest play in the past game right there. That was huge. It was 45 yards, 46 yards. He wanted, originally was looking left, and then as he rolled, you could see receiver was open, but could he get it there? And he did. It was very, very nicely executed. A nice ball and good catch by Lockwood as he's getting... Hit right as he catched the ball. Now we got first and 10 in inside the red zone here. Cleary taking the handoff here, and he will pick up a decent gainer, four, maybe five on that first down play. Lewis on the Actually, I was kind of almost thinking White Bear was going to need to use a timeout because they were you know, <laughs> coming way downfield there. They were getting that play in a little bit late, but it, it worked out. Second and five now, or second and six. They'll call it up on the scoreboard here. Back to Cleary. Ran into his <laughs> own man there. Cleary with the run. Pretty well defensed by Osseo. Getting a little bit of penetration, forcing him to, forcing Cleary to bump into the lineman in front of him. Third and three coming up here for the Bears. Trying to take the lead for the first time here. They're down 10 to seven. 
But a good drive to begin this half and four down territory here, no doubt. Anamashan will run it and mm. stacked up. Adamashan will get the, the stop there the and will make it a fourth down. I don't know if he gained anything at all there. Maybe a half yard. And Cleary limped off the field at the end of that play. And he's replaced by Nate DeVitt. Well, they've got a good kicker, but I don't think they're thinking along those lines no. here. I think they're going to be looking to go for it here. Fourth and a long to, two. Looking to get the first down right here. A little bit of a high snap, but Oof. now he sprints out left Ooh. and the tackle made. Let's see, it looks like it'll be enough though for the first down as Witcher <coughs> able to wrap him up, but not before he'll advance it. Is there a flag down? Looks I like see. there is in yes. the end zone. So this hmm, interesting spot where that flag came. Right. Looks like the Bears are clapping though. It might be against Osseo. Wonder if you'd, you'd you'd think because the ball was being run that direction that it was a oh unsportsmanlike against Osseo. All right. Hmm. Ah. That'll just be half the distance. Not a terribly big penalty in terms of yardage or anything only but a, only a yard but still first and goal from the two yard line advantage white bear lake hey what's the heavy run three minutes three minutes power set here Oof. and spinning free not quite going to get there though Levi Arvig running it, 5'10", 200 pounder. Kind of more of a linebacker usually, but in there in their short yardage set there. Cleary will check back in and Arvig out. Second and goal from the one. You gotta believe they're just gonna try and nothing fancy here and just try and punch this one in. I think so. Probably my guess would be a quarterback sneak. Nope. Well, I'm gonna hand it off to Cleary and he, he will get he in. Did, he just yep. kind of slid off enough to fall forward into the end zone and Cleary will give White Bear Lake the lead for the first time as he's able to finish that drive. So excellent drive, that long completion of 45 yards. The big play there for White Bear. And Cleary makes a nice run here. He does a real good job of getting into the line of scrimmage, but as soon as he gets hit, he slides off the hit, even though he's lunging into the end zone, but he does get the score. Nice, nice little piece of one yard running. Goodwin in to attempt the extra point, and he nails it. So with 5.42 to go in quarter number three, White Bear Lake now leading at 14 to 10. Nice possession by White Bear Lake. And we see right there, you see how clear he bumps into the tackler but doesn't get wrapped up and slides to his left. Boom, right there, slides to his left in the end zone. Yeah, short yardage. Short yardage running, kind of a a good art there, as he, mm -hmm. uh, like you said, really just slid off that tackle. Anywhere else on the field, you wouldn't really notice that play much because no. it would just be a one yard gain and nothing too big. But getting to the end zone makes uh, makes your coach happy when you can finish a run like that, even though he got hit early on. Especially a nice, a nice drive like that. They didn't hesitate to go for it on fourth down, and and uh, that certainly looks like the right decision now. And I think it would have been anyway because you'd give Osio the ball back at, you know, like <laughs> the five-yard line or something. Right. Cooper and Hall deep. And this early in the game, too. I think you're definitely looking for seven, not three there. Well, <sighs> it's Osio's turn here, and they run back straight up the middle by Samir Johnson. And Osio 
getting possession here. They've got a lot of different looks quarterback-wise. They've had uh, Isaac Johnson started the game at quarterback, and right. the touchdown pass was thrown by Barsonis, and then Iggy Cooper has been probably taking actually the most snaps back there as I would a guess. Yep. running quarterback or wildcat look, if you will, and that's who's going to be back handling it right now as well. Ooh, handoff was juggled there. Ooh. Fortunate to uh, keep possession. Omar Knighton oh. didn't have it cleanly there to begin that run. He didn't lose sight of it, though, and uh, kept possession after getting about a yard as he <laughs> Just a definitely gain, was juggling yeah. it forward there. Not what you like to see. Low snap this time. Cooper, though, handles it well. Trying to bounce to the outside, and down he'll go about the 25 short gain on the play. White Bear Lake defense has started to adjust. Oh, yeah, it's going to be a short loss on the short play, actually. Loss and White Bear Lake defense adjusting to what Iggy Cooper's capabilities are out of that sweep. Uh, play and they're they're just sliding with him whichever direction he goes until until they get to a point where they can make contact third and ten Cooper has caught a pass but hasn't thrown one and he's not going to hear either he will look to run it got by one but not the rest as he is popped pretty good trying to get out of there Arvig in on the stop there, and it'll bring up fourth down and a punting situation for the Orioles. Yeah, they really didn't, really didn't generate any offense at all in those three plays. Kuya coming on to punt. Lockwood waiting back deep for the Orioles. Kuya, I remember, had about a 70-yarder <laughs> in that second quarter. Ooh, he mishits this it. one. Let's Here's see where it goes out of bounds. That one, let's say, short, shorter than 70. This will be a 17-yard punt, so kind of evens out right. the average a little bit there. That one slid right off the side of his foot and went right out of bounds at the Osseo 42 or 43-yard line. The 42, and you see the ball just sliding off his feet and getting downfield and making a right turn. So the Bears <coughs> now with the lead and get good field position here at Osseo's 42, easily the best uh, spot that they've gotten the ball in this afternoon here. White Bear trying to win for the third straight week. It uh, had, as we said, a couple of, um, you know, pretty, uh, if you want to call it, not bad losses right. against good teams before that. Toss out going to Miles here, and he cuts it upfield, Ooh, and then he fumble. lost it. Looks like the Orioles may have it. I think Lewis was first to it. They'll have to unpile, though, and see if he wound up with it. It looked like it looked like that ball not only came free, but it looked oh, like... Oh, Bears got it back. It is. It was ruled a fumble. There's no doubt about that, but it looked like Lewis was the <coughs> first guy to it, but Miles ended up back on it. Uh, Lewis must not have <laughs> been able to secure it or else it was ripped away from him eventually. Miles took a hit. That was the first uh, you know, fumble like that that we've had that was really yep. up for grabs. Yeah, that was a pretty good, pretty good hit right on the ball. You see the ball popping free and bouncing there. It looked like Charlie Lewis was able to make the play, but Miles ended up with it. Well, that's a good hit right on the ball. Shoulder right on the ball. Cleary taking the handoff here. We've got a flag down on the play. This might be a horse collar. Horse collar. Or, yep. In that area. Personal foul. Horse yes, collar. it yep. is indeed a horse collar. I, it, I saw him, his body kind of get twisted sideways. Yep. <coughs> Result 
So the Bears will keep this drive going as they get it at the 16 yard line now, first down. Leary tapped on the shoulder by his quarterback there as they adjust. Now he takes the handoff. And they keep Ooh. powering forward here. Cleary not wanting to go down easily in that line, helping him out. He's, he's not an easy guy to tackle. I was going to say we had at least one helmet come off. I think it was Cleary <laughs> as it'll be. You see, boy, his leg drive is, he's very aggressive. Not shy with contact, loses his helmet, so he's got to take a play off. It'll be first and goal here at about the six now for the Bears. 2.15 to go here in the third. They lead 14 to 10 and looking to add to it. And tweet pushed back here. Not much on that one. And also a also a loss of helmet, but a flag thrown on the play could be against Osseo. Might be a face to the hand to the face penalty. Or a face to the hand. You never yes, know. it could be. It is indeed against Osseo. So it'll be half, half the distance. Half the distance. Now, when you see a, f a lineman's helmet pop off like that, you usually think hand to the face or face to the hand as they <laughs> fumbled that one. Yeah, you can see the, right in the middle of the play how that happened. Bears again in a heavy set looking to try and punch this one in. Cleary takes the hand off and not going to mm -hmm. get there. Wrapped up down low by Say and then Jones up high. <laughs> They'll lose a yard or so on that play. That one they were all over. I mean, you might as well sell out to try and stop that it, run. And absolutely. Yeah, maybe you're vulnerable to a play action or something, but if they're going to just run it in anyway. Well, they've shown that they want to run that play on this part of the field until you, you know, they're gonna run it until you stop it. Anamashan will run it and falls Nothing over a little pile right in front of him there. And sometimes they, they teach you that, especially if you're gonna get stalemated a mm -hmm. little bit there to just create a pile. And that's what uh, Anthony Cobb did. Well, this may be not an automatic touchdown as it was starting to look like when they got that first and goal at about the two and a half after the half the distance penalty. Exactly. Third and goal from the three here for the Bears. Three back! Back to Cleary, and he Ooh. cuts it up hard, and let's see. No, he didn't quite Short. get there. Be down to the one. I thought he was going to get in there. Looked like it, yeah. And that might be the last play of the quarter. If they're going to score, they might have to do it at the other end here. It looked like an initial hole, and he found it, but when he cut, there was somebody more black jerseys there than he realized. So the exactly. quarter does come to an end. We'll flip ends and then White Bear will be fourth and goal at the one. It's 14 to 10, White Bear Lake after three. The fourth quarter is on the way next. CCX Media, your source for great local programming, is available on Amazon Fire TV, Apple TV, and Roku. Our free app allows you to stream all three of our channels live. You also have access to a large on-demand library, including full sporting events and daily newscasts. To find us, go to the store, search CCX, and download our free app. Then sit back and enjoy all of your favorite local content. The CCX Media app, available on Amazon Fire TV, Apple TV, and Roku.
White Bear Lake leading at 14 to 10 as we begin the fourth quarter. And uh, fair to say a pretty big play coming up here, <laughs> fourth and goal at the Osseo one for the Bears. And again, no hesitation. They do have a good field goal kicker, but not going to trot him out here. Well, this is a big play, but I think as much for Osseo with their defense, obviously, but if they if they make the stop here, they're, they're really still in the game to win it. They're going to hand off to oh. Cleary, and he will get in easily here. Cleary punching it in for his third TD of the game. Sometimes it's all just about execution. Yep. There wasn't anything terribly different about that play called compared to the last, but this time they get it blocked, and he easily goes off tackle and in. Well, he was one hole wider than they have been the previous two or three plays, and that made the difference. There was, there was good fill on the inside, but not on the outside. Goodwin on to attempt the extra point, and his kick is up and through. So with 11.57 to go here in the fourth, now 21-10, White Bear Lake. They have come on strong here. They have the only points of the second half. And that, that was a big finish for them, certainly, to get this 11-point margin. Yep, coming up with a, with a touchdown rather than a... Even a field goal, field goal would have kept it in within one one score. Well, Osseo certainly got their time uh, got time to, to get back in this one, but they're going to need to be efficient. They get another <laughs> look. You see how he turned to his right, and there was nobody there. There was good seal on the on the outside as everybody got caught up inside. Yeah, the motion Clear. man there got a good block. Yep. That was Kazmarczyk in there on the offensive side of the ball and got the right angle. They timed that one up right for him to kind of collapse Certainly that end did. of the line. <coughs> good win this time. Going to drill it. Oops, wait a minute. I'll stop things here and... I don't know Let's if there's a flag, flag or yep. just that they went before they were given the go-ahead there might be the case. Yeah, you have to wait. The referee down in the end zone is the one that says that it's ready to kick, and you've got to go when he says go, not when you feel like it. Let's see if Goodwin will again... <laughs> kick the ball on the ground. He's been able to reach the end zone, so I'm a little surprised that he would really right. do that or give Osseo a chance to return it. But And this time he <laughs> will kick it long. Maybe the previous time wasn't by design, but either way it works out better for him this time. Touchback. And the Orioles will face uh, a deficit of 11 now as they get the ball back. And really, you know, it's yeah, it's only a one play into the fourth quarter, but you probably can't necessarily count on getting the ball more than a couple times, so they're going to need to be right. efficient. Barsonis is in there at quarterback. He threw a touchdown pass for their only touchdown. Hasn't taken too many snaps, though, today. And looking to throw on first down. He'll sling it out there and caught by Knighton. Knighton up the sideline <coughs> will pick up a first down here out That's to about the 35. Give him 16 actually on this gain. Very nice catch by Omar Knighton out in the flat. And then not only to get out in the flat, get open, but catch the ball. Yeah, kind of a one-handed grab really there. And turn up and get good yardage after the catch to get the first down. Out at the 36. Boy, that's a good drive starter, too, especially for a quarterback. Hasn't been in there much. Gives him a little confidence. Yep, absolutely. Looking to run that <laughs> jet sweep look this time as uh, Kalen Blanchett on the handoff there. We'll pick up just a couple. Arvin get the stop. Second down. You got just a couple, but that, that play 
is designed to keep the the flank defense honest and set set some things up both for inside and for throwing the football. This time to the night, and he's wrapped up. Fought his way forward, but stopped at the 40. Gets a couple. And not, not quite the smooth ball handling that you'd really want to have on that play. And Knighton didn't get a good, didn't get a good hold on it, so he was. Third down snap here. Arson is rolling to his left, throwing, and Wills dropped it. Incomplete. A little bit of a reach for it, but it was definitely a ball he should have had. Fourth down. And that will oh. bring up fourth down. A little bit of a decision time here for Osseo. Yeah, I, I'm not sure I would uh, not punt the ball. I think, yeah, they're, they're definitely going to punt it because you really can't afford to give up field position at this point. Flag comes down before the snap. This might be a substitution kind of thing maybe or... Illegal. I don't know what the illegal procedure was. So penalties have Oof. mounted up against the Orioles here. <laughs> Push them back five. Lockwood, Lockwood waiting back deep here for the Bears. Quiaz kick and takes a big <laughs> bounce again. <laughs> He's kind of went feast or famine. He's had a couple of great ones and then the one that went off the side of his foot. But oh my goodness, they love that kick. It's down to about the 12 or 13 yeah. yard line. Yeah, he, he got an, another nice bounce after it hit the ground. There was no way that the return man could catch that ball. No, and, and wisely <laughs> so. I mean, you don't want to risk giving Oof. a ball back to Osseo there. As no. much as you hate to see it bounce down the field like that. Yeah, I always like to have the guys get up underneath it and catch it, even if, you know, fair catch it, but catch the ball. You know, don't let it hit and bounce because you never know what direction that pointy-ended ball is going to go. <coughs> well, a must stop here for Osseo and then ideally do it relatively quickly, too. Bears would like to... Put together a little bit of a drive and eat some more clock up and get field position and, you know, I maybe even score again. Oh. But if not, that'd be okay. Empty backfield. Mm, I don't know if it was by design, though. On I'm looking around, and now the flag comes down. Is this going to be delay a game? Might be. You think it's going to definitely be on White Bear Lake. It is. Yep. Yeah, delay a game. I, I didn't see the play clock, so. The way he looked around, it almost looked like he thought there was supposed to be somebody else. I don't know if they had 11, but. Mm -hmm. Going to look to throw. Set up a little screen out to Miles. And he'll get that penalty yardage back and maybe a little more. And an Osseo so player goes down. down at the yep. end of the play. Oof. Injury timeout. Looks like it was a gain of about four, maybe five, like you said, Jay. No. Hey, ooh, they're giving him six or seven on that one. Looks like we have a cramp. Yeah, the way he went down after the play just kind of slowly tumbled to the ground. I, that's what I was thinking it might be. See if we can see it at the end. There's... Miles, again, they kind of like him out run. in space. They're a little athletic. And there's the defender starting to reach back. Mm -hmm. I'm surprised at this time of the year we can have cramping. But we had a, we had a player cramp up last night. 
at our game last night, too. Zach Hill is the player who's getting slowly to his feet now and walking off here for Osseo. Yeah, second down and eight for White Bear Lake here as they lead it 21 to 10. They've had the best of this second half, scoring a pair of touchdowns after trailing 10-7 at halftime. And looks like we're now ready for a play here. <laughs> and Michelle looking to throw, turns Ooh, back. The other way, and it's intercepted, and this will be a touchdown. Maybe. Maybe. No, not quite. Ooh. Ball bounces out of bounds after the pick there by Pearson. We do have a flag down. It's kind of right in the middle of the field. Hmm, this could be an interesting one. Maybe on the return, though, too. Yeah. We've got another injured player for Osseo. Looked like he got hit right in the chest pretty hard. Officials discussing. I haven't seen a signal yet what this no. penalty might be. Or who it's even against. I think there was, you know, some quick concern for the player, so they wanted to get that part of it mm -hmm. dealt with first. Absolutely. Well, I think you were right, Jay. He was he was going in for the score, and he got he got bopped right in the chest. It's holding against White Bear Lake, so the return will count. Penalty declined. Well, that's just exactly what Osseo needed to challenge White Bear Lake to get back in this game. Boy, and exactly what White Bear Lake didn't need. Pearson returning that one down to the one. And I am a little throwback, but they didn't yep. surprise him at all. And he jumps right in front of it. And I just jumped the gun call, and this is a touchdown. I, right. I thought well, he was about to go in, and then until he wasn't. <laughs> and then the ball went out of bounds, which was fortunate got, for Osseo. And he got hit by Matt Anderson, a 6'3", 215-pound offensive lineman. So the turnover, exactly what Osseo needed here. And now they'll try and punch it in. Iggy Cooper will take the snap and look to run it in himself. And he's close he and not in. Going to get in, in for the touchdown. Near side official's arms went up. And Osseo quickly capitalizing on the turnover as they will get on the board and they also you know don't uh, time wise it's also so such a big thing for them to get that pick fairly early in the quarter and, yep. and finish it off right away and boy they have given themselves a very good opportunity to get back in this one now an extra point would bring them within four and it looks like is that isaac is that isaac johnson who intercepted the pass? No, Pearson. Oh, Pearson. Oh, yeah. Fala on yep. to attempt the extra point, and his kick is up, and it is good. So 21-17 with 9.42 to go here in the fourth quarter as the Orioles pulling within four. Here we see Iggy Cooper taking the ball, getting it right off tackle. And getting a good surge into the into the end zone for the touchdown. Make this back a four point game now. Well, 
you wonder if the Bears are kind of kicking themselves for being that aggressive there yeah. a little bit. I mean, three runs <coughs> and a punt would be looking a whole lot better than what it transpired. But you can't play scared no, either. you can't play scared. And, you, and the ball was being thrown back to their uh, number one receiver to Easton Miles. And uh, Pearson just played that perfectly. He just sat and waited for it to be thrown and then stepped in front of Miles to make the interception. He had the sideline all the way to the one-yard line. Ball falls off the tee here before Fowler can kick it. Well, and I thought Osio, too, did a good job. Of, I mean, the White Bear Lake was wanting them to think that everything was going to be flowing to the right side, mm -hmm. and then he would he would turn back and maybe catch them out of position yep. coming back left, but that was clearly not the case. And this one boomed well into the end Ooh. zone, nine yards deep. White Bear Lake gets the ball back. Boy, the complexion of this game really feels like it flipped in a hurry. Yeah, there, absolutely. <clears throat> Not only that, we've seen both kickers really bang the ball today. They, you know, kicks going seven, eight yards deep in the end zone. That's a that's a big kick. And in each direction too. So it right. kind of uh, solidifies what we said that that those aren't really wind aided either. No. So a uh, key possession here for both teams. White Bear had all the momentum, but Osio has seized it back. The interception by Pearson setting up the touchdown. Anamashan running this one, stacked up, and he's in the middle of a big pile of Osio players there. And the Bongs uh, with the first wrap up there and then got plenty of help, but it was about an eight yard gain or maybe nine even. Yeah, for he got a really good gain out of that. Nice lead block right at the linebacker spot by uh, Clary to help him get that nine yards. Second and one, Cleary will take this handoff. Ooh, and he is pounded. Met early on there for the Orioles by Cobb. And no gain. Boy, that... The Osseo defensive line, when they hit it, they hit it really well. So third down in the yard here for the Bears. And it will be Amashan running it. And he will pick up that first down. He again gets into the middle of a pile, but he will pick up five or so, maybe six even on that play as they easily get the first down. First down. And here's where clock kind of becomes yep. important, too. It's still, you know, eight minutes or so. But if you're White Bear Lake, you really want to use some time and move the ball up field, like we said earlier, right. which they obviously did not do last time. Yeah, they really, you know, they're, I, my guess would be they're not going to take a chance with a throw unless they have to. Cleary takes this hand mm. off and squirts through there. That time pretty well blocked, and that's what you love to see if you're the O line on that first down play is they'll get about five or six. Yeah, the O line is just saying to him, let's run the ball, let's run the ball. So second and four after that nice gainer on first down. Back to Cleary it goes. Mm. This time well defended. He's driven back. Didn't make the line to scrimmage, I don't think, even on that one. No, it looks like he's about a yard in the backfield. So 
So third down coming up here for the Bears as we're under seven to go now in the fourth quarter. 21-17 White Bear Lake, but Osseo tightening it up. They're down 21-10. Got a nice interception by Robert Pearson and then a touchdown run from McGee Cooper. Anamashan's going to run this one. He got through that first tackle and then wrapped up by Witcher. And he's going to be right near the sticks. Looks like they are going to say it's enough for the first down. Which oh. stop. Not for the white, white first down. So nice. For you know, it looked like looked like that was gonna be just short of the line to gain. Yeah, at initial glance I thought this is probably gonna be something that we might be measuring on at right. least, but right. not quite. Oh. And I see a player jumping and yep, it's gonna be against the Orioles or Trying to get a bit of a head start there. My guard penalty. First down. First down. Not what the Orioles needed at this point. No, definitely not. Although you can see why, you know, you're really looking to fire off the ball and make something happen. I mean, you still yeah, don't like absolutely. it. Absolutely. Larry is wrapped up. There's Lewis in the backfield. Talked about his tackles for loss this year, and uh, there's another right there. Nice timing by Charlie Lewis to get hit that seam right as the ball was being snapped so nobody could block him. And he hit Clary right in the backfield just as the handoff was being made. Just a little bit early, I guess, for Osio to be thinking about using the timeout there. They, you know, still got <laughs> some time to go, but possibly if they get a third down stop, he could see that. Anamashan oh. sweeping to the left, and there is tons of room for him, and he'll head out of bounds there, easily picking up the first down. And nobody with a black shirt anywhere close to that play. And I think the smart decision, too, to just not take an extra unnecessary hit, just get it out of danger, get the first down, right. and get ready for the next play. Well, Bears fans thinking this is more like it, this, this drive than the last <laughs> one where they tried to be aggressive and go up top and instead threw a pick that led to a touchdown. Cleary takes the handoff here, fighting forward. Cleary. Wrapped up there after a gain of about three. Gain of three on the play. Second down. Fowler will stop. On this play, we see the leg drive of Cleary to after he gets hit just past the line of scrimmage, he drives the thing two more yards before being stood up. Second and seven. Anamashan will run this one, lowers his head, <laughs> and he was kind of just waiting for contact there. He got maybe a yard. So now we have third and, third and third five, and third and six. Last time in this situation, Anamashan took off on the quarterback sweep and had a wide open left hand side of the uh, formation. Under four minutes to go now, a big third down again. Third and six. Ooh, he juggles it. Now Anamashan's in trouble and he's going to be sacked. Wow, Ooh. big loss there. Uh, the Bongza with the sack. And that's probably going to force a punt rather than a fourth down play, obviously, because it's going to be fourth and about 17. Well, Wisely didn't give the ball up there, but no. once he juggled it, they were in trouble. Uh, and it looked like he was going to try to throw the ball just as he was being hit. He's lucky he didn't lose the ball. And Osio does now, in fact, use a timeout here defensively. Save 30 seconds or so is uh, 3.31 to go here in the fourth. The Orioles 
hoping that thing's set up for a chance for them to d drive for the winning score here. They're down that's, by four. That's what they're looking for. Yeah, it did. It definitely looked like that was intending to be a play action pass. At mm -hmm. first, when I, the first play, when it happened initially, I wondered if him bobbling it, you know, just turned that into a scramble uh, because of that, but I don't think he was I, intending to hand that off. No, I think you're right. I think it was a play action pass all the way, and I think, he, you, like you said, Jay, the bobble disrupted the timing and put him on his heels, and as soon as he got on his heels, he was going to get sacked. Good win on the punt. Johnson and Smith waiting back deep. Ooh, oh, it's blocked. Kick blocked there by Say. Picked up by Quia. There is a flag uh, down on the play. I don't think this is going to count. Osio may get the ball, but I don't think the touchdown is counting here. Looks like it'll be against the Orioles on the return. I don't know. There was only two. There was only two guys close to the ball, and they both had black suits on. I don't know what. Well, they get the huge had. play as Phillips say with the block. I saw somebody get knocked down. I don't know if it was a blindside block, maybe. A White Bear Lake player got. Maybe it was way down. behind the ball. I don't know. It is a personal foul on a low blow. block yeah. against Osio on the return. So I believe the Orioles will still get the ball. They're just yep. The touchdown doesn't count. Yes, that's correct. Block below the blue in the A's. Oh, <sighs> that's a tough one. They get the yes. special teams play they wanted. Instead, they're going to get the ball at the 40 instead of a touchdown. Still still got a chance to get the, get the win, but you'd rather be ahead by... <laughs> Three or four than behind. Boy, if you're White Bear here, how do you give up this kind of rush? Oh my gosh! That, and I don't see where the where the low, low block occurred. It comes a little bit farther down the play, I think. Yeah. yeah. First down run here for we'll we'll Orioles. Will pick up about three. Now if the if the Orioles can score, they're going to use up a you know this type of football is going to use up a fair amount of clock. If they score, they're not going to give White Bear Lake much of an opportunity. Second and seven. Cooper now looking to throw Ooh. and he's in trouble and down he goes. Man. Sacked there by Del Forge. Max Del Forge really, really came in hard, and, and the receiver was breaking free just as as Del Forge got got into uh, Cooper as he was trying to throw the ball. He hasn't thrown a pass today. No, and I'm sure they were thinking we're going to really catch him off guard. You know, they caught, caught 10 of them off guard. Yeah, DeForge just beats, he just beats the lineman and keeps going. Did a good job of uh, getting a piece, uh, you know, enough of exactly. to Cooper to get him on the ground, too, which he's a pretty elusive guy. If you don't get him, uh, you know, it still has a chance to be a big play if he gets out of that. Exactly. Now so, you got a third and very long. You get you got to play smart now. You can't force the ball, and you don't want to. You know you don't want to put it up for grabs, but you you want to try to have eight to ten yards be your your window, so that on fourth down you got a chance to get a reasonable reasonable play. Arsonis is back in there now at quarterback. And Cooper is here on the left side in the slot. Third and 16. A little bit of low snap, but he handles it. Here's the throw <laughs> and incomplete. Trying to get it to Iggy Cooper. Marcus 
fastball. Got his hands on it. It wasn't the greatest of throws. It was no. behind him. And then now fourth down. Wow, this could kind of almost be the ball game right here. Fourth and 16. Yeah, and, you know, that was, that was I think, the right kind of play. If they get the ball to Iggy Cooper running, throwing it behind him, just not – not there, and then all of a sudden now you're fourth, and you've got to get a first down. You've got 17 yards. That's a that's a tough, tough thing to ask. Well, here we go. One big play. Oops, we've got somebody called timeout. Time I out. think. Yeah, White Bear Lake, I believe, must use a timeout. Yeah, they did. I think they wanted to see what Osseo was going to mm -hmm. come out in, and then if they didn't like the look that they had for it, they would use that timeout, and they do. Osseo only has right. one yep. timeout left, so, I mean, this uh, hope isn't lost if they have to give the ball up here, but no. it wouldn't look good no. in terms of the timing anymore. No. Boy, Osseo, they're going to be thinking what if in this game. Oh. They almost had the go-ahead score on they, that they, punt they return had it, yeah. and block, but... Penalty on the during and, the and return. You just, you just try to make it clear on a turnover, and you're behind the ball. Don't touch anybody. Just let it be. You and know, don't block low on any yeah. return like that. Yeah, and you know you <laughs> you just you the the guys get you know they want to make contact. They want to, but when you're 20 yards behind the play, you're not helping anybody by making a by making a block anyway. The guy's not going to run that thing down. Bears has talked about before the game, we like to be aggressive. They want to put pressure on here. I mean, right. although it looks like they're only going to rush two. Walking a couple others up now. They will bring four. Barson is throwing, and it's intercepted. Arvig with the interception for the Bears, and here he comes back the other way. And pushed out of bounds. So the big the big block return for a touchdown with a penalty turns into an interception and good field position for White Bear Lake with the opportunity to run the clock out right here. I had time, but I'm not sure that pass wasn't going to be terribly near a receiver no. anyway. It certainly did not look it. Did we see. And I think Ossie was lucky they didn't get a late hit here yes. a little bit too. Yeah, I could have. The fact that there have been a couple of big penalties already against them probably mm -hmm. <laughs> saved them from getting one there, I think, because they were frustrated and wanting to get a, another hit on him late there. But So the Bears have it at the 33 of Osseo, 2.16 to go. Osseo only has one timeout left. And Michonne's going to run it. Oh, his Ooh. helmet is ripped, is ripped off. off. That's going to be a penalty. Yep. And a boss boss to carry carry penalty. Penalty. Even though oh, and he is shaking up, too. Yeah, he holding Oof. his lower back. So he probably, as he turned to his back to the defense, he probably took a shoulder right in the, right after, he, right after his helmet was ripped off. Yeah, so that's going to be another major penalty against Osseo. Unfortunate one. We've had a few injuries down the stretch of this yeah. game here. Here you see right there is it helmet ripped right off. Yeah, and you're right, he got hit. I think he was, as he was falling, he got hit in the lower back. Yep. Took a shoulder right to the, right above his hip. Mm, hobbling off here, so. You know, they're still in good position, but obviously you would just as soon you have your experienced yeah. <laughs> quarterback in there to try and run the game out, not uh, have to. Yeah, they list a 10th grader on the, 
on the roster as a yeah, why, quarterback. Wyatt Sto Stahoviak is coming in. He was the holder, I think, earlier, and it looks like he is going to be the guy taking the snaps. I think here you just take a knee. Oh, and he bobbles it, but it goes right to Cleary. And exactly why you were hoping your quarterback wasn't going to be out of the game. Not, wasn't right. a great snap either, but oh, they nearly gave the ball right back to Osio there. Of course, Osio, though, out of, or no, do they have one timeout still? Not On using score, it here. Yeah. They do have one timeout. They, nobody's taking a timeout. Nobody's stopping the clock. They, not sure I understand that one. Yeah. I think White Bear Lake maybe is going to let this run down and then use a timeout of their own. They've still got yeah. two good to go because the quarterback's over next to Coach Bartlett. He's, yeah, I think they're just going to let it go down to one and then call time. Yep, that's exactly what they do. They just as soon not have to snap it even again after seeing that one. Boy, some exactly. hearts uh, started racing there for the Bears <laughs> at that uh, look. Nothing is easy. No. Uh, and <laughs> well, and you're seeing, you know, not, not to be critical, but you're seeing... In some cases, why these teams are two and five too exactly. is you know you're making mistakes at inopportune times and too many penalties, uh, especially on the Osseo side. Yeah, My that goodness, just, that just kills you. Yeah. yeah. But that 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 ball on just on that on that last play, if it had not bounced right to the running back, Cleary. That, that bounces one more direction. Osseo guy picks it up. He can, he might be ahead of 11 guys <laughs> all going the other direction. Be a second down and about 10 and a half here for White Bear Lake, a minute 15 remaining. They just want to eat up the rest of this time without coughing the ball up with their backup quarterback now in there. This time they get it cleanly, Cleary. Cleary on the carry. And now Osio will use a timeout. Gain of five. Timeout on the field. Yeah, that's, Osio Osio takes takes their third final timeout. that's their final timeout. It's with a minute and ten. White Bear Lake can run virtually all of the clock off with two more plays. If they get a first down, then they don't have to worry about it at all. But if they, even if they don't, there's going to be little or no time left for Osseo. And don't give up the ball and don't go out of bounds are the two things if you're the Bears yeah. right here. The first one being more important even than the second. <laughs> and based on what I saw last night, I'm not calling the game on anything. Right. right <laughs> that Park Center Sartell game had an unbelievable finish with the Pirates end up winning in overtime in a game that, boy, it looked like it was going to be Sartell's to take. Easy, you know. Looking to sweep here and just trying to get down now without uh, boy is uh, Anamashan coming back into the game there. I'm mm -hmm. a little bit surprised. But yeah, a little bit surprised, and he carried the ball. They'll lose yardage on the play, but that's not the concern at all. They're just no. wanting to eat up as much of this time remaining as they can. They may very well let it take all the way down and use another timeout with one second uh, on the play clock, too. Right. And then, you know, run the ball. They've got you know, you got a difference of about 20 seconds. So, they if they get the if Osseo gets the ball back, they'll get it back with 18 or 20 seconds to go, and probably 75 or 80 yards to to try to make up. That's a tough task. 
Bears do indeed use a timeout. 21 seconds remaining. Yeah, you figure a play, a running play here, probably use, what, maybe five <laughs> seconds, roughly. I mean, depending on how it goes. And then the clock would stop immediately uh, on a change of downs. Yep. But, or change of possession on downs, I should say. And But, yeah, it's uh, going to take something really big for us, you know, even if they do get to stop here. They made a game of it, certainly. That certainly interception and, oh. and punching that in, and then they get the block punt that uh, you know appeared to be a return for a touchdown that would have given them, without that uh, that penalty, this you know we'd be talking about Osio trying to celebrate a win here, perhaps. Right. I mean, you exactly. don't know what would have happened exactly after that, but uh, they were in a position to go ahead with a great special teams play. So Anamashana, he must have told the coaches, I'm good to go. I can get I back guess, in yeah. there. He's going to fake it. And, oh, they're looking to throw. Juggled <laughs> but caught by Lockwood, not, although still short of the first down. down. Not sure why you throw the ball on fourth down and 16. But so Asya will get the ball back with one more opportunity and they probably got a chance for two plays and white bear is going to be spread out all over the field trying to take away any kind of passing lanes that they can and not give up 90 yards for a touchdown barsonus is in there at quarterback Flings it over to Iggy Cooper, and he falls down. No timeout. And there's a flag down on the play. So that stops the clock. That gives Osseo the break there with nine seconds. They might have been able to get up and spike it and have a couple seconds left, but now they've got nine seconds. Personal foul against White Bear Lake. Hmm, interesting. Not smart. No. I don't I I don't know where where it occurred or how it occurred. But it, it it was thrown right near the ball, so they yep. must have felt that Cooper was had down. already was down and they yep. dove on. Um I don't know. Well, at first glance it seemed like that he might be juggling the ball and I yeah, he's down oh. and then Yeah, that's not a big yeah. hit, but you you know, he's down. Yeah. You know, in high school ball he's down. There's no no scrambling around getting up. So first down here for the Orioles, but only nine seconds left. Marson is rolling to his left. Now he'll throw over the middle, almost picked off. And there'll be three seconds left as Gibson jumped in, got both hands on it, couldn't bring it in though, and it'll be one last crack at it now for Osseo. And the receiver's got to, in any instance, the receiver's got to come back to the ball so that you, this doesn't happen. You can't wait for the ball to get to you because the defender is moving forward. Especially when they're playing as deep as they are. They're all going to be trying to move forward to attack the football. I think they'd like to get the ball in Iggy Cooper's hands here some way, shape, or form. Yep. Probably their most dangerous guy. He's out in the slot to the right. They want that little slip screen instead. Oh. It's complete, but tackled it. immediately oh, is Samir Johnson, and the game will come to an end as White Bear Lake comes here to Osseo and wins a tight one, 21-17. Oh. Some what ifs. Boy, <laughs> White Bear was kind of controlling the second half till they threw that interception that led to yeah. a touchdown, and then Osseo again. Appeared to possibly take the lead with it when they blocked a punt and returned it for a score, but it did not count because of a penalty on the return, and they never ended up getting an opportunity to finish that drive as nope. the Bears end up winning it 21-17. So they go to 3-5 and five on the year, and Osseo finishing the regular season at 2-6. and six. Thanks to both coaches, both Ryans, Ryan Bartlett, 
Ryan Stockhouse, a couple of the really great guys that we've worked with through the years, and uh, we thank them for their help. Thanks to Bill Kwan, who is having a birthday today, too, the AD at Osseo, and his staff, they've always treated us so well here at Osseo. Final score on this one, White Bear Lake 21, Osseo 17 for Bill Huntstock and all of our CCX crew, MJ Wilcox. So long from Osseo.